May there! How you doing? Bobby Durkins here. Well, today I'm going to focus on a team whose mascot is a tiger. Now, he's not like our tiger. It looks like he'd bite your head off and, you know, swallow you and crap you out in the next few days. No, this is a smiling tiger. Looks like he should be standing outside of a shopping mall waving at all the traffic saying, come in for world-class deals. The Auburn Tigers. Now, I admit I have been very rough on you guys. But you shouldn't give me so much material. But let's let's pay some respect to you. You've given us some great football players. The best Auburn Tiger, in my opinion, Bo Jackson. I know you thought I was going to say Cam Newton, but Bo Jackson, in my opinion. Of course, Cam Newton, Nick Fairley, Cadillac Williams, Ronnie Brown. Uh, uh, if I didn't say Nick Fairley already, Nick Fairley, Takeo Spikes. Lord, I'd love to have a name like Takeo Spikes. People, I'd be riding around there, who's that in that pickup truck there? All jacked up. Oh, that's Takeo Spikes. Cool name. Tons of other players have played for them. So let's talk about your season and what's been going on with you. So last year you went 10-4. and four. Uh, To me, kind of a schizophrenic season because you see 10 wins, and in that 10 wins you hear you beat, at the time, number one Georgia, and then at the time, number one Alabama, and you go, these guys went to the college football playoff. Then you have to say, yeah, they lost four ball games. Um, some of the ball games I understand, some of them I don't. Uh, so uh, last year, uh, you were undefeated at home. If someone had to come to Auburn, it was a problem. Just ask Georgia and Alabama. Now, I know if you talk to Alabama fans, you know, you get the whole story of we had 14 players that were dead at the time, and they just somehow got resurrected by the college football playoff. Hey, look, I understand it, but you still got beat. It is what it is. Um, so I, it is when you hit the road, it, it was not that good. Okay? When you hit the road, starting off with your very first loss to us. Uh, you, you lost to the uh, to the real Tigers. Uh, then you turn around and you played the Tigers on down the road, uh, LSU. Now, LSU is a shell of what they used to be. They're a shell of tradition. So when you hear LSU, you're like, oh, we're going to play LSU. Not the LSU that was just killing it. I, this LSU I'm not impressed with. I know they got good players, but I'm not impressed with them. You lost to them somehow. I think they lost to Troy last year, but they beat you. Um, then you do all that craziness with Georgia and Alabama. Then Georgia gets you back in Atlanta, SEC Championship, and they really got you back. Then you turn around and play Central Florida in the bowl game, and you give them a fake national championship. Two times, two games in a row you're playing there in Atlanta, and you lose. Now let's talk about who you're returning, who you've lost. You're returning 13 starters, six on the offensive side of the ball, seven on the defensive side. You lost uh, uh, you lost Carrion Johnson and Cameron Petway, both your running backs. Uh, that was uh, number one and number three running back for you. I believe uh, uh, Johnson was one of the top running backs in the SEC, if not the top leading rusher at 1,391 yards. Um, you had the injury bug biting you. You were next to last in sacks, meaning Florida got uh, they allowed their quarterback to get sacked more than anybody else, and you were right behind them at 36 sacks. I think they gave up 37 sacks. Not really good on protecting the boy taking the snap. Uh, in the spring, I've heard that you guys have had some health problems, some health issues, so it's not getting any better. Now, Jarrett Stidham, highly talented quarterback, a lot of promise, a lot of people knows he has done some good things. As soon as they, he got out of that correction facility out there in Baylor and he got away from it because he didn't want to be convicted of anything, he's here. Uh, you do return a really good wide receiver, youngin's name, Ryan Davis, 815 yards, five touchdown, had a 75-yard long touchdown. I mean, kid can play. He's not a real big dude, but he is explosive. You had a pretty good recruiting class in the offseason. Uh, top 12, top 15 recruiting class. It's not bad whatsoever. Uh, on, the, uh, on the offensive line, there's still question marks here and there. But you do return six foot seven, 300-pound Prince Tega Wanna Go. I don't know if I said that right, but anyway... He's going to play on Sundays. He's a very talented player. But you do have a lot of questions on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, you return to Sean Davis. Sean Davis is a middle linebacker. Very dangerous. Very I mean, very physical young man. Um, you, as I'm looking over your interceptions and whatnot, not seeing a ton of interceptions from last year. 
Uh, I mean, you you do have a good defense. They're they're solid. Uh, returning seven stars is a good thing. So it's better than not returning, but like three. Uh, but you you guys, you do have the talent. Uh, Deshaun Davis, as I said, uh, Dontavis Russell, uh, Jeremiah Denson. You know that you know who you got on your team. But there's no massive names that are jumping out at me. And that's one thing that I look at when you think about uh, when you think about Georgia. You know about Fromm. You know about the, even that big incoming uh, freshman. You know Zeus White coming in. I mean, you have all these names bounced around. Uh, when you look at your hated foe Alabama, you have big names. You know it's coming back to uh, you know uh, Jalen Hurts and you know that whole thing that's going on there. You have all these big names. We are team. I know Jarrett Stidham, and that's it. I don't know anybody else. Nobody else. Last year, if I hadn't mentioned this already, you were great at home. You were not so great on the road. Um, so let's jump into your season that you've got to play coming up this, this year. So you start off in Atlanta, the place you've lost your last two football games. It's kind of like hearing that song on the radio when your girlfriend told you that she was dating your brother now and you can't hear that song anymore. That's what I would equate you boys going to Atlanta right now. Y'all are seeing this as a home game. Now, if anybody, y'all, any of y'all are just really good people, you've been watching all my videos, you know I did a preview on Washington. Now, we're living here in God's country where Jesus is Lord and football is king, and I happen to be one of the pastors preaching the good news of college football. You could stop in college football in the South, and you would really have most of the teams that's going to end up in college football playoff. Yes, of course, you've got Ohio State and Oklahoma and teams like that, but really, the South produces the majority of like, national champions, especially over the past 20 years. Well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Washington is legit. I know they're playing football and we're all good and asleep. They're legit. Got a fantastic football coach, and they have the talent. I know you're counting this as a home game. I know you're saying, well, this is in the South, and that means nothing. Means nothing. Do I think you can win this game? Yes. But I believe Washington's going to beat you because they have the talent and the coaching. They have the momentum. I know you don't want to hear that a West Coast team's going to beat you in Atlanta, but I'm afraid they are. Next game, Alabama State. It's going to be at home. You're going to beat them. No big deal. Next, you play LSU. I know they got that kid Burroughs up there from Ohio State, and I know that they've got talent. But I don't buy into LSU. Once again, a shell of tradition. They're living off of what they've done in the past, what everybody perceives of them in the past, but just because they're in the SEC doesn't mean that they're good. It's like meeting somebody who has a good-looking sister, and you're like, oh, I want to go out with her sister. She shows up with buck tooth and a booger on her nose. Nobody wants to date her. Arkansas is your next game. And that's going to be at home, too. This is working out in your favor so far. Uh, Chad Morris, our old buddy, our old offense coordinator at Clemson, he's, he's commanding things down there. I know y'all tired of hearing about Arkansas because they were going to come in still uh, uh, mouths on. I, I, I get tired of that crap, too. You know, you hear all this stuff. It's like, can we just focus on the season at hand? Uh, if this was year two or three with Morris, uh, I might be whistling a different team, but I think you're going to beat them. I think you're going to beat Arkansas. Arkansas, uh, another shell of tradition. It's just a shell, but they never produce it. Like, they're a running team. I don't know if his offense is going to work there. Their running team has not produced anything but a bunch of losses. Yeah, good back here, good back there, but there's some small teams that does that. So you're, you're going to beat Arkansas. Next game, at home. I mean, it's like... Four games in a row at home. You're playing Southern Miss, yeah, no problem, you'll beat them. Then you're at Mississippi State. Now, when I think about Mississippi State, it's like thinking about Barney Fife. You think about Barney Fife, he's a scraggly dude running around, way more tall, way more bark than bite, and all this bunch of stuff. Different Mississippi State team. Now, I don't know anything about your coach other than that he comes from Penn State. He's supposedly a really good coach. We'll see, but I do know that unlike other years, they have some really good football players on their team. And if Nick Fitzpatrick stays healthy, if Sweat stays healthy, you're in good. You're 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 in for a good night there. You, you might get your tail whipped. I don't think you get your tail whipped, but I think you might lose this game. I think you might definitely lose this game. But I have this weird feeling you're actually going to go to Mississippi State and beat them. So so far, so good. All right. Then you go. Back home, you have Tennessee coming to you. I think Jeremy Pruitt wants to beat you. I think he wants to prove something. 
uh, I think if he starts Keller Crest, he's gonna have he's gonna have a chance to pull some things together. I'm just not sold on that it's gonna be this year. I think you're gonna beat Tennessee. I think there's a good chance you're gonna beat Tennessee. Then you're at Mississippi. Well, their team is held together by warrants and NCAA sanctions and a touch of JB Weld. I think you're gonna beat them. You take a week off, you come back home, you play Texas A&M. Long story short, you're going to beat uh, Texas A&M. I think that uh, they're going to be more competitive than if you play them in week two or three, like we will. But you're going to beat them. Then you go to Georgia. Not going to win that game. I'm not even going to sit here and talk about it. Uh, I know. That's a rivalry, Bobby. You're a Clemson fan. You don't get it. No, I do get it. You beat them last year and embarrassed them on live national television. And they got you back in the SEC championship. But they're bringing you back to Athens to absolutely stick their cleat up your butt and break it off in it. And you're going to need some major surgery and a ton of stitches. Hope they're dissolvable. So you're losing that game. Then you're going to play the fighting Baptist of Liberty. And I know they're going to come in there and spread the good news, but you're going to beat them. And then you go to Alabama. I was parched. That's refreshing. You're going to lose that game. So, your big major games, I notice I didn't even talk about it. You're going to lose that game. You're going to lose at Tuscaloosa. Unless the entire team, half the team's dead, and Nick Saban is, has been, you know, he has been declared incompetent by the state of Alabama. And he's in a home. You're losing that ball game. Um, so, uh, yeah, I know, I just lost a bunch of Auburn fans. Uh, but your big games are away. Washington, that's an away game. That's an away game. You're at Georgia. You're at Alabama. Yeah, it's it, that Washington game's home for you compared to Seattle, Washington. But that's a that's a away game. You're at Mississippi State. You could possibly drop that game. Uh, so I see you dropping three games, <coughs> maybe four. You might be able to win that very first game. Come out with two losses. I don't think you'll get to the SEC championship game. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, that's that's all I'm really going to say about that. So so Auburn, I know I'm probably on. Uh, uh, I, I probably know that I, I've made your list, and I'm not getting a Christmas card this year. But uh, you know, I have to tell the truth. I have to be honest, and just you know, lay it out there. So well, everybody, just do want to remind you, I am on Instagram at the Bobby Durkins at the Bobby Durkins on Instagram. Go check out the Volunteer Road Show if you hadn't checked them out. Go check out to Pigskin Pete, Pigskin Pete, type him in. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. And uh, anyway, well, I'm going to end like I always end. Subscribe, hit the like button, because this is good stuff. And as I always say, I'm Bobby Durkins. I'm right, and if you disagree with me, you're wrong, Bobby Durkins.